E files. They're so scary. So scary. <laughs> um, they really are when you're first learning them. I yeah. I was scared of them, yeah. and um, I think because of that fear, there are some fun mistakes. fundamental mistakes that challenges we make. Challenges, challenges, and yeah. sometimes it's not fear. Maybe we're just a little too aggressive or a little too excited about it. Um, but we maintain that learning the electrophile mm -hmm. really is so important yeah. to an LTech. And I don't think a lot of schools teach or give you as advanced of education with the electric file as you need to be successful. Yeah. And so today we're gonna we're gonna troubleshoot and we're gonna show you some of the things that you probably are doing and again May didn't even May May didn't even making mistakes so all day. May made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> show you some of the things that you may not even realize that you're doing or things that you can be doing a little bit better. That's awesome. If you're new to nails, you need to learn the e-file. If you are old to nails, I hate that word, because I did Experience. hand filing and did not use an electric file for six years of my career, so challenge. You guys need to watch this video. It's very important. Okay, so you guys, today I wanna to talk with you a little bit about some of the mistakes that people make when they're doing electric filing. Electric filing can be done very safely, but if you're not using the right bits, if you're using the wrong speeds, if you're using the wrong angles, you can actually cause a lot of damage to a client's nail. So I wanna take you through some of the bits, first of all, so that we make sure that you're using all of the right bits. I'm gonna show you the correct angling, and then we'll talk about a little bit um, some speed and how to position your hand so that you're gonna be safe while you're using the electric file as well. So let's start with our bits. So we've got bits that are diamond. So these bits, any bit that you have that's a diamond bit, those are gonna be interchangeable for either left-handed or a right-handed tech, okay? Now the cuticle bits we have, um, those work really good right up by the cuticle area for cleaning out dead protein growth. Or we also have a larger sized um, diamond shaped bit that that can work really well for over the whole surface of the nail for prepping. Um, if you like to use that over your hard gels, you're welcome to use that over your hard gels. Okay. The diamond bits are not as coarse as some of our other bits and we'll talk about those in just a second here. The diamond bit is gonna be a little bit more for, like I said, cuticle work, but then also refining. So if you've taken down bulk with one of our other bits, you can use the diamond bit to refine. Okay. So if I were to say I had my nail almost finished, but I just wanted to do a little bit more refining over the surface, I could turn my speed up to about 5,000 RPMs and I can work kind of in the direction, I'm pulling in the direction towards myself, okay? So for right-handed people, you're gonna work right to left, okay? Left-handed people, you're gonna work in reverse and you're gonna go left to right, okay? But you can see this isn't taking down bulk of my product, it's just refining. I can also use that to refine around my cuticle area. Okay. or down the sides, again, pulling towards myself. Okay. So again, if you had your surface mostly smooth, but you just needed to fix up a little bit here and there, go ahead and use your diamond bit. Works great for that refining. The next bits we have are carbide bits. Okay. And we have several different carbide bits. Now a carbide bit is going to do more shaving of the product. So it's gonna take down your bulk really quickly, okay? Um, we have our safety bits, which have the rounded top, so those work really good up by the cuticle area, so you don't have that sharp edge, you don't have to worry about cutting your client's cuticle or anything like that, okay? We also have our X-cut carbide, and this works great for if you're cutting in smile lines. You can also use it over the surface of the nail to refine, take down bulk. Just have to be a little bit more careful of that sharper edge, okay? So let me show you both of those real quick. So if you're a right-handed tech, we do have two of our safety bits. We have our standard, it's kind of a medium grit, and then we also have a coarse grit. For left-handed, we do have the medium grit in the left-handed cut. We also have the X cut in the left-handed cut, okay? So if you're left-handed, make sure that you're using the correct bits, okay? So when I'm using my carbide bits, I tend to turn my speed up to about 14 to 16,000 RPMs. 
same motion. I'm going to work across the nail, pulling towards myself, up around that cuticle, because again, that rounded top isn't going to cut, so I can work around that cuticle area. Okay, and then again, you can also pull towards yourself. Okay. Okay, so again, across, and you can, I'm not sure if you can see on camera, but as I'm filing here, I'm getting a lot larger dust particles. That means that it's shaving off more product rather than just that refining that our other bits we're doing. Okay. Now, if you're working with that X cut, okay, the X cut works really good for cutting in smile lines. Again, at that 14 to 16,000 RPMs. Okay. You can use this like I was using the safety bit you can use that over the surface you just want to be a little extra careful if you're working up around that cuticle area so that you don't end up cutting okay but this one actually works great for when you're cutting in those smile lines you can come in and you can see how quickly it's going to cut through that product okay if you're trying to cut in a smile line, you're definitely not going to use that safety bit. It's not going to give you that sharp, crisp line as the X cut would. Okay, so those are our carbide bits that you would use for taking down bulk of product. We also have an under the nail cleaner. Okay, so this one works great if you've got maybe a client that has a little bit of product stuck underneath, or maybe their natural nail needs to be cleaned out. Again, this one I use at about 14,000 RPMs. You can use that right underneath the nail just to clean out any of that outgrowth of their natural nail or if you got a little bit of product stuck down underneath there. Works really good underneath. Okay. okay. Then the last bit that we have, or the last type of bit that we have, is a mandrel and a sanding band. Okay, the mandrel is something that you can use over and over and over. You just make sure, just like the rest of your bits, that you wash and disinfect it according to your state board. And then the arbor band is what goes on top of it. So that's what's actually gonna do the work. The mandrel by itself isn't gonna do anything, okay? So you wanna make sure you're gonna put that arbor band on there. Okay. Now this one is, it's going to kind of do a combination of what the diamond bits were doing and also what the carbide bits were doing. It's going to take your product down, but it's not going to take it down as quickly as the X cuts would. And it's going to do a little bit more refining like this, the diamond bits would do. Okay. So again, with this one, I'm going to turn to about four to 6,000 RPMs. Okay. This one you can use up around the cuticle area. Okay. And then also again through the body of that nail, just to come through and refine. It will take down product a lot faster than what the diamond bits will, but not as fast as what the carbides will. Okay. So again, just using it more for refining. This is also the bit that we like to use when we're prepping the nail. So if you're prepping before a full set, you can use it up around that cuticle area and then through the rest of the body of the nail. Okay. Now, one thing you wanna make sure so that you don't end up cutting your clients with your arbor band, always ta take an extra file or an old used file, give it a couple of taps on the side. That way it's gonna soften up that edge so that when you are up by that cuticle area, it's not going to cut their skin, okay? You can also do that with your X cut bit. So when you get a brand new X cut bit, you only need to do this one time. So the first time you use your X cut, same thing. Go ahead and just tap that edge just a couple of times on your file so it's gonna be a little bit safer if you are working up around that cuticle area. Okay. okay, so those are the different types of bits that we have. And so now you know that the diamond bits are gonna be a little bit more for refining. The carbide bits are gonna do more shaving down product and they're gonna take down the bulk of your product really quickly. And then the mandrel on the arbor, the arbor band on the mandrel is going to, again, be a little bit more for refining and also for doing your prep work. Okay, next thing we want to talk about is the angle of your bit. 
So as you're working on your nail, the angle of the bit is extremely important. We always say you never wanna lift up on your bit, especially when you're using that X cut, because what can happen is as you're filing, if you have your bit up at an angle, what's gonna happen is it's actually going to put in little ridges. Now, if you're working over your acrylic, it's not as crucial. You still don't wanna be putting those ridges, but if you're working and prepping a natural nail, and you had that angled up, or if you're working maybe doing a fill and you're prepping your fill area, if you angle up that bit, what's gonna happen is that's gonna cut right down into your client's nail, okay? You wanna make sure that you're not doing that. You wanna make sure that you're always keeping your bit parallel to that nail, okay? So wherever you are, your bit is always gonna follow the curve of the nail, okay? When I get up to my cuticle area, let me switch over to this one. Okay? When I get up to my cuticle area, it does look like you're angling up, but you're just following the arch of the nail, okay? We're not angling up to here, we're just following the arch of that nail, okay? So as I'm working from the cuticle, I'm working with the lower part of my bit. So kind of in your head think, I'm putting the pressure right here at the base of my bit, so it's gonna hit with pressure at the free edge of the nail, okay? As you're working up into that arch area through here, you're going to use more of the middle part of that bit. Okay? So that's where your pressure is going to be. When you're getting up into that cuticle area, you're going to use more of that top part of the bit okay? to work right through there. Okay? Same thing when you're looking down the barrel of the nail. For right-handed text, you're going to work right all the way through your left. On the right side, you're gonna work with the base of the bit connecting to the nail. Okay, Up into the center, again, you're gonna use more of that middle part of the bit to pull through, and then to the tip of the bit down on the left side. Okay, Lefties, you're gonna do the opposite. Okay, Lefties, you're gonna start with the base of the bit on the left side of the nail, up to the middle, down to the right side, okay? Make sure for lefties, you always turn it into, into reverse so that your machine is on reverse instead of forward. Now, one thing that people tend to, they tend to fear the electric file a little bit, and so they have a tendency to turn their speeds down to a lower speed. When you're working with the safety bit or the X-cut, you wanna have your speed at about 14 to 16,000 RPMs so that it has enough power to pull that bit all the way through the product and shave off that product, okay? So as you're working, it should feel nice and smooth, okay? It should go right over that. You shouldn't have to put any pressure onto this. If you do feel like you're putting pressure into your bit, it's usually one of two things. It's either the bit is old and it needs to be replaced or your speed is too low, okay? So if I were to turn this down to say that four to 5,000 RPMs and I try to come through, it's not gonna do the work that I need it to do and it's actually gonna feel like it kind of almost catches on the nail, okay? So you wanna make sure, turn your speed up, especially for those newbies out there. If you haven't used the electric file, I'm guessing that you're a little afraid to turn the speed up but you're gonna find that with that higher speed, your bits are gonna just go right over the surface nice and smoothly, okay? Now the other thing that I wanna show you as I'm working here, you can see that I'm going from one side to the other. I'm not going back and forth. I'm going one side, I pick up my bit, come back to that other side, okay? What happens is if you tend to go back and forth, you can lose control and that bit is gonna wrap around the nail, okay? Now with the safety bit, it again, it has that top so it's not going to cut the client, but if you're using any of the sharper bits, that is going to cut right underneath there. So that's why we always recommend just work one side to the other. So for right-handed text, you're working right to the left, pick up, right to left, pick up, okay? Left-handed, you're working left to right pick up, left to right pick up. Okay. So that way you're not gonna have any issues with that bit wrapping around. One other thing that I wanna show you is not necessarily anything to do with the hand piece. It's actually your positioning, okay? So when I first started doing electric filing, I filed with my, my holding hand 
like this from an underhand grip. You can see what happens to the wrist. Let me bring that in. As I'm working, my wrist was bent like this for eight hours a day, okay? By the end of the day, your hands are sore, your wrists are sore, everything is sore. To avoid that, okay, there are times when this, um, this hand position is appropriate, but you wanna make sure that you're keeping your wrist straight, that you're not crunching it up like that, okay? A way to avoid that is to use an overhand grip. So it's just turn your hand so that your palm is facing down, you're hanging onto the client's finger from the sides. It's actually really good so that you can pull the skin down on the sides and you can get right down along those edges, okay? But it also keeps your wrist nice and straight so that you're not gonna have issues down the road with cramping up or even tendonitis, carpal tunnel, any of those issues. By keeping your hand straight and your wrist straight, that's gonna help you have a much longer nail career, okay? So keeping that hand straight, keeping your elbow anchored onto the nail, I don't know if you can really see in the video here, but you can see that the hand kind of comes in at an angle. My client isn't sitting with her arms straight at me. Her elbows are actually kind of turned out to the side. So that way I can move my client exactly where I need her. Okay. If your, hand, if your client's hands are coming straight out, it's not as easy to move your clients, especially turning them inward. But when you have them angled like that, you can move them exactly where you need them. And it's comfortable for them and it's comfortable for you. Okay? So hopefully these four little tricks will help you not make some of the mistakes um, that a lot of people do and you'll be really successful with your e-file. Thank you so much for watching our nail videos. To check out more, head right over here and to subscribe to our channel, click right over here.